Well, good morning, good morning, everybody. Another day. So we're in Goderich. We're gonna go check out the, uh, the world's largest salt mine, believe it or not. It's the world's largest salt mine is in a freshwater lake. So Lake Huron, one of the five great lakes. Underneath Lake Huron is a uh, massive salt deposit, which they'll be mining for 200 years. So we're gonna go look at the world's largest salt mine in Goderich, Ontario. That's perfect. Typical, typical slinger. Look at the train too. That's This is actually really cool. Yeah. It's like with like a high security like Okay, so this is Lake Huron. And underneath Lake Huron is the Michigan Salt Basin. So many, many millions of years ago, this part of the continent was in the Southern Hemisphere. And there was a sea, like a saltwater ocean. And it flooded numerous times and evaporated and left behind massive deposits of salt in lakes Michigan, Erie, and Huron. Mainly Michigan and Huron, but parts of Erie as well. In the early days, the Harbor Flats became a bustling center of economy. There were shipyards, rail lines from the 1860s, three hotels, fish shanties, warehouses, freight sheds, ship chandlers, piles of coal and lumber, numerous homes, and eventually in 1907, a railway station. Over time, much of it was moved to the current town site at the top of the hill. In addition to the extensive grain elevator complex, began in 1866, a large flour mill operated from 1872 to 1950. There was also a salt well and a waterworks and an electric company. And I was talking about the escarpment, the Niagara Escarpment and the Dolestone Basin. So the reason that there's a massive salt deposit underneath Lake Huron is because the bottom of Lake Huron is lined with this Dolestone bowl of hard rock that the escarpment is made out of, which separates the salt from the fresh water. So what they're doing here at this mine, you can see those blue buildings over there, Goderich Mine, there's a sign that tells you it's the world's largest salt mine. They've sunk a shaft 1,800 feet down underneath lake, the lake. So they're literally underneath Lake Huron. There'll be some pictures because you can't actually visit the mine. It's an active mine, actively working mine. And the mine is constructed completely of salt. So all they do is drill and blast and use machinery to excavate or to extract a chunk of salt. They then use water. They pump water. Uh, into it, pump that up to the surface in a slurry. Once it's at the surface, it gets evaporated mechanically and separated and turned into salt. Because there's a shaft that goes down quite far, 1800 feet, everything has to be built in the mine. So they disassembled all the machinery, everything in little bits and pieces, and then reassembled it inside the mine down below Lake Huron. So they've got dump trucks, excavators, all kinds of conveyor systems, all kinds of machinery down there that they piece by piece broke apart and then reconstructed. And the mine is made entirely of salt itself. Like they don't, there's no bracing or anything or shoring or, you know, timber work, cribbing kind of a thing, right? It's literally just, they cut a block of salt out of the salt basin that they're mining and they keep moving forward. And like I said, predominantly table salt and road salt. We're in a snow belt here. Great Lakes gets a lot of snow, but it's the world's largest underground salt mine and it's underneath a freshwater lake and the Americans actually mine the Lake Michigan as well. There's a bunch of salt mines in Lake Michigan. The Goderich Lake Huron mine is the biggest mine in the world when it comes to salt production. They'll be mining salt here for many, many, many years. It's massive. The deposit stretches for kilometers. I think they said it was a hundred feet thick, I believe. And all it was was this used to be an ocean and then it evaporated because the, the earth goes through cycles of heating and cooling. So it's normal for the earth to get hot. It's also normal for the earth to get cold. So in one of these periods of extreme heat, there was a series of evaporations which left behind massive salt deposits, which were then covered by dolestone and fresh water. Well, and you say, where does the fresh water come from? How did the Great Lakes, some of the world's biggest lakes, get all this fresh water if there's a bunch of salt? was an ocean. So the thing with that is, is during the last ice sheet, the ice sheet that was covering North America stretched all the way down to Wisconsin. 
once it melted, it gouged out the lakes, all that running water, that erosive force of the water, and left behind a bunch of fresh water. Glacial water and the melting of the glaciers is what formed the freshwater lakes. So we can't visit the mine itself. There's no visitor center, but there's some information around Goderich and there's some things we're going to go see. We're going to go see the mechanical evaporator. This monument was erected in October 1966 by Sifto Salt, limited to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the discovery of salt in the Goderich area. It pays tribute to the foresight and diligence of the Huron County pioneers, whose perseverance in their search for natural resources led to the discovery of salt in the area a commodity which has since been one of the mainstays of the Goderich economy. So they were initially looking for oil. They wanted to find oil. So there was a guy, he was drilling for oil, and he found salt. So they abandoned drilling for oil and found salt and went to go mine the salt. And in Petrolia, they were looking for fresh water and found oil. But you can see, guys, this is a salt block. This is what they're mining down below Lake Huron. So underneath Lake Huron, there's the Michigan Salt Basin, and this is the part of the Michigan Salt Basin, the largest underground salt mine in the world. And this deposit was formed by seawater evaporating over many, many courses of time. And it's literally just a massive chunk of salt. Okay, so we saw the salt mine where they actually mine the salt and they store it. And then this is where they use the evaporate, the mechanical evaporation process to actually get the salt you know, distilled down to its working form, be it road salt or table salt. So it's a mechanical evaporator, evaporates the water and turns the salt into usable salt, basically, in a in solution in water, and then it gets separated at this plant. The Goderich Mine Memorial. In memory of the workers we have lost, working together we must remain focused on safety to help eliminate illness, injury, and death. sad. Rest in peace, guys.